Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. I am back with another all mineral sunscreen testing video. I did my first one in May. I usually only do one a year because I test anywhere from 10 to 20 sunscreens in the one video, but the industry is cranking out sunscreens like crazy. So there were so many more mineral sunscreens that I didn't get to test in that video that I thought, well, let me go and buy them and give these a try as well. So I've got another nine sunscreens that I've tested here for you today. These are all mineral sunscreens. So the only ingredients that they will have as far as sunscreening ingredients are zinc oxide and or titanium dioxide. I'm not testing the sunscreens for their sunscreening abilities. I'm mainly testing them for how wearable they are, whether they leave a white cast, whether they feel greasy, whether they're super shiny, how they wear under makeup. So I know a lot of people like a really luminous finish that is not for me. I have a lot of uh, enlarged pores and texture on my skin. And so anything that's super luminous just tends to accentuate the texture on my skin. So if you love a really luminous glowy sunscreen, then definitely watch because you'll definitely see what the finish is here. And if it looks like you would like it, then you can find one that you like. I do these testing videos to help all of us find our perfect sunscreen. I have combo skin. I'm mainly normal. I'm slightly oily through the T-zone. I tend to be a little dry around my mouth and chin sometimes and I test the sunscreens using one quarter teaspoon of sunscreen for each one. I like to level the playing field so that I'm using the exact same amount of each one. So you'll see me measuring out a quarter teaspoon. That's really important because sunscreen is dose dependent. So in order to get the SPF that's stated on the label, let's say an SPF 30 or an SPF 50, you have to use a quarter teaspoon of it for your face and your neck to get that SPF. After I apply each sunscreen, I let them dry and set for 20 minutes. You're supposed to do that with your sunscreen. If you can, that's awesome. If you can't, don't worry about it. But ideally, that's what you would do. It would dry and set and form a film on your skin to protect you from the sun. For the ones that I put makeup on over, I wear the same makeup over every single sunscreen because I know how this makeup wears. And so I know whether the sunscreen is making it settle in my pores or settle in my wrinkles or wear off faster. The foundation that I use to do all the sunscreen testing is the L'Oreal True Match Original Super Blendable Foundation. All right, so let's get into the sunscreens. I'm going to be talking about them today from worst and we'll be building up to best. As I said, there are nine here in front of me. So let's start in with the one that I consider to be the worst this time. It is a brand I had never heard of, but I saw this sunscreen at Nordstrom and it was all mineral. And so I was like, oh, well, who knows? Maybe this could be the one. I'll give it a try. So I bought it. It's called Odacite SPF 50 Mineral Drops with Niacinamide and Green Tea. This does have a PA++++ rating. It sells for $48 for one ounce of sunscreen. It's 12% zinc oxide and it has a number of botanical extracts in the formula. This is a lightweight white liquid sunscreen in a glass bottle with a pump. It spreads easily over the skin, but gathers up in hair and eyebrows, leaving a little bit of a purplish tinge around hair. It's extremely shiny and extremely greasy feeling with a strong white cast. After 20 minutes of dry back, it hadn't dried or set and it felt gross and looked gross. So in my opinion, this was not wearable on its own and felt too shiny and too greasy for me to even try it under makeup. All right, next up is Ilya's new C Beyond Triple Serum SPF 40. This is $64 for one ounce. I thought the Tatcha was gonna be the most expensive sunscreen that I was reviewing here today. Oh no, the Ilya, way more expensive than the Tatcha because at least the Tatcha is 1.7 ounces for $60. This is only one ounce for $64. So that is an expensive sunscreen. This is 10% zinc oxide with ascorbic acid. It's got some oils and botanical extracts in it. This sunscreen comes in three shades. I'm using it in tone one. It's a tinted runny liquid that glides over the skin and is very easy to apply. It feels wet when going on like a lightweight oil. The tint matches my skin tone very well and has a luminous finish. It made my eyelids start itching right away. It just feels like little itchy pinpricks all over my face and neck. By the end of the 20 minutes, my eyelids were burning and red. It still felt wet and oily after 20 minutes and was really, really shiny. Because of the itching and stinging, I had to wash this one off. 
This one was just too shiny and too itchy for me to even wear for more than 20 minutes, which is kind of a relief because my gosh, can you imagine if I love this one the best? I would have a hard time spending $64 an ounce on a sunscreen. Other people may not have that itching, tingling, burning sensation with their skin. I mean, you just can't tell what is gonna irritate your skin on any given day or with any given product. So, you know, this might work fine for some people. It just didn't work for my skin. All right, next up is Kopari Antioxidant Face Shield Daily 100% Mineral SPF 30. This retails for $30 for 1.5 ounces. It's 14.14% zinc oxide. This is a white, thin lotion texture sunscreen with a strong fragrance of plastic. You know when you get like a new pool toy, like an inflatable, that smell that comes out of the package? That's what this smelled like. Or it kind of smelled a little bit like mothballs. It took a little work to get it to rub in and it didn't really rub in very well around my hairline. It leaves a white cast, it feels greasy, and it's very, very shiny. After 20 minutes of dry back, the white cast was still visible, it still felt greasy, and was still very shiny. So unfortunately, this one was not wearable on its own for me because it's too greasy, and it was just too greasy and too shiny for me to want to try it under makeup. Next up is Koa Anti-Pollution Mineral Sunscreen SPF 45. This is a PA++. The PA rating is for UVA rays, so three pluses is Almost the best rating, four pluses is the best rating. This is $29 for 1.7 ounces. It contains 12% zinc oxide. It's water resistant to 40 minutes. It comes in tinted and invisible, but the invisible is just white. So I went with the tinted, and this also has niacinamide and chamomile in it. It is a tinted, runny lotion texture that blends easily and is really easy to apply. It does feel pretty greasy on the fingers, and it does feel greasy on the face. The finish on the Koa is very shiny, and it gives a slight peachy, whitish cast. After 20 minutes of dry back, instead of drying and setting, it actually moved around and balled up and pilled, making me wonder about the level of protection that this was gonna give me, uh, because you know sunscreen is supposed to set so that it forms a film, stays in place, and protects you at least for a couple of hours. So for me, this one was just a fail all right, next up is Summer Friday's Shade Drops SPF 30 Mineral Milk Sunscreen. This is $36 for 1.7 ounces. It's 9.4% zinc oxide with squalane and antioxidants. This is an off-white runny lotion sunscreen that's fragrance-free. It rubs in quickly and easily and doesn't feel greasy. It does have a very shiny finish and a slight white cast, so that wouldn't be good for darker skin tones. After 20 minutes of dry back, it felt dry and set, and I thought my skin looked great. I couldn't really see the white cast too much. It didn't feel oily. It didn't look super shiny. Oh my goodness, this is lovely. After 20 minutes of dry back, it feels completely dry, completely set, no greasy feel. Foundation went on over it nicely from a blending standpoint, but it did make the foundation look heavy and drier and actually darker than it normally would. The foundation settled into all my wrinkles within minutes. The wear wasn't bad throughout the day with the foundation staying in place on my nose and chin, but it felt so drying and accentuated every wrinkle on my face. It even made my under eyes and my under eye concealer look so crepey and so wrinkled. So I think this sunscreen is very, very wearable on its own, especially for people with light to pale skin tones, but it's not good under makeup and I don't think it would be good for dry skin. I think this would be probably best for people with combo to oily skin. Next up is Tatcha the Silk Sunscreen SPF 50. This is a PA++++ rating. This is $60 for 1.7 ounces. It's got 10% zinc oxide and hyaluronic acid and niacinamide. This is a very runny, watery liquid sunscreen with a light peach tint. It's so lightweight and fluid, it glides over the skin and rubs in easily with no problems around hair or eyebrows. 
It has a tacky feel, not necessarily a greasy feel on application. It gives a slightly light cast when first applied. It does feel slightly tacky, but not overly greasy. After 20 minutes of dry back, it's got a very shiny finish and only the slightest white cast. With makeup on over it, the shine from the sunscreen comes right through the makeup, making the finish more luminous and accentuating my pores. The sunscreen caused my makeup to settle into my wrinkles right away. The makeup wore off much more quickly than usual. It was wearing off on my nose at the four hour check-in. The shine had come back through the powder pretty quickly, making my skin look more textured and making my foundation look shinier than it should after just a couple of hours. It looked patchy by the end of the day and crusty by the sides of my nose. It's extremely shiny and for 60 bucks, it really needs to make my makeup look perfect. Like all the hype on this that I had heard was, oh my God, it's like a primer for your makeup. It'll make your makeup go on so perfectly. And for me, it just didn't do any of that. It wasn't really wearable on its own. It was too shiny. It didn't do anything for my makeup. So, all right, next up is a sunscreen that so many of you recommended to me, and I'm glad that you guys loved it. As I said in the beginning, we're looking for a sunscreen that you will love and you will wear every day. So just because I don't love it, you know, it doesn't mean that you're not allowed to and that you have to switch. So stick with it if this is one that you absolutely love. Same with all of these. If you love it, then it's your sunscreen. It's like finding your person, you know? It's like a needle in the haystack. So anyway, the sunscreen that I'm talking about is from Bliss. It's their Blockstar SPF 30. This is $25 for 1.4 ounces. This is 4.1% titanium dioxide, 11.5% zinc oxide. It's got botanical extracts and oils. This is a tinted, thicker, cream texture sunscreen with a strong fragrance. This smells strongly of lavender, which is a lovely fragrance, could put you to sleep. But anyway, I don't like a lot of fragrance. I don't like to smell things on my face. And the fragrance I felt with this was very, very strong. It took a little effort to rub this in, especially around my hair and eyebrows, but it did eventually rub in well. The tint matched my skin tone pretty well. Bliss Blockstar didn't feel greasy and wasn't overly shiny. It does feel a little heavier on the skin than the thinner, runnier liquid sunscreens that are in this video. After 20 minutes of dry back, it had set and it felt dry. It has a matte finish and is smoothing on the pores. With makeup on over, it looked thick and cakey and settled into every wrinkle right away, especially on my forehead and around my eyes. It was majorly worn off on my nose after just four hours in the Block Star. It looked patchy on the rest of my face and was still settled in all my wrinkles. Um, unfortunately, this was so not good under makeup that I can't really recommend it wholeheartedly for people who wear makeup and want just one sunscreen that's gonna work on its own as well as under makeup, but it could be very wearable on its own. Next up is Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield Matte. SPF 50 PA++++. This is $39 for 1.8 ounces. It's 12% zinc oxide and it's water resistant to 40 minutes. The Color Science Matte is a creamy lotion texture with a tint. It spreads over the skin really nicely. It blends out easily. It does feel a little greasy going on. The tint is on the darker side, so it will work for medium skin tones. The finish, unfortunately though, isn't matte. It does have definitely a glow to it. So if you're expecting something full on matte, this isn't that. After 20 minutes of dry back, it looked nice from a distance and it was still a little bit too luminous for a matte sunscreen. It had set a bit after 20 minutes, but still felt slightly greasy. I applied makeup with a sponge, which removed the sunscreen from my wrinkles. And so it looked a lot better with makeup on over it than it did on its own. I used much less makeup because of how dark the tint is, and I thought it looked pretty good. The sunscreen definitely shortened the wear time of the foundation. After eight hours, it was very worn off. It looked okay from a distance, but it really didn't look very good up close. So I felt like this was very wearable on its own, especially for people with a medium skin tone. And it looked pretty nice under makeup for most of the day. It only shortened the wear of the makeup slightly. So I think this one was actually pretty good. Uh, it's wearable on its own and it's decent under makeup.
Drum roll, please. We have reached the final sunscreen in this sunscreen testing video. And so the winner of this video is Babo Botanicals Daily Sheer Fluid Tinted Mineral Sunscreen SPF 50. This is $19.99 for 1.7 ounces. It's got 20.6% zinc oxide. It's fragrance free and it does have some botanical extracts and oils in it. The Babo Botanicals is a tinted liquid sunscreen with no fragrance. It applies easily to the skin and rubs in quickly with no problems around the hair. It has a non-greasy lotion feel and it isn't too shiny. The tint hides most of the white cast, but it does leave me looking slightly paler than normal, but still within the range of being wearable. After 20 minutes of dry back, it has a soft satin finish. It doesn't feel greasy and it feels dry and set. I added makeup and it looked great. It had a primer-like effect on my pores and didn't affect the look, color, or application of the makeup at all. It didn't cause any settling into wrinkles either. The makeup wore well throughout the day and was mainly still in place by the end of eight hours. It became slightly more luminous throughout the day, but never settled into wrinkles. It didn't feel dry or drying and it didn't get patchy. So overall, I feel like the Babo Botanicals is a real winner. I really like wearing it on its own. I really like wearing it under makeup. I've been wearing it a lot since I tested it for this video and it has become a real fave and I think it's going in with the rest of my holy grails. Now I know people are gonna ask me how the Babo Botanical compares to the winner of my sunscreen video from May, the Undefined R&R sunscreen, and also how it compares to my other faves like the MyShell, the Elta MD UV Element SPF 44, the Dr. G Green Mild Up Sun Plus SPF 50, or <laughs> the Australian Gold Botanicals. As you can see, I have a sunscreen wardrobe. I like to wear different sunscreens on different days depending on what I'm doing, whether I'm gonna wear makeup, whether I'm not gonna wear makeup, what time of year we're in. So comparing the Babo to the R&R, they both have an SPF 50. The R&R is water resistant to 40 minutes, so you could wear this one to the beach. The Babo is not water resistant, so I don't re recommend this one for the beach or working out. While there are oils in both of these sunscreens, the R&R is much more of an oil-based sunscreen. When I put this one on, this one does feel oily going on my skin. In. With the Babo, I don't have that oily forward feeling on the surface of my skin. It sets up to be a little bit more of a dry finish. They are both very lightweight, liquid, fluidy textures, so they're very com comparable in my book. Now, as far as the um, Elta MD, this is more of a cream sunscreen and it's a little bit thicker. The tint on this one matches my skin tone a little bit better. The Elta MD is also 40 minutes water resistant, so can be worn to the beach. Another favorite is the Dr. G Green Mild Up SPF 50. This, I feel like, and the Babo are a little bit similar in that they're both very runny liquid. They both leave a, like a slight, slight, slight white cast. The Dr. G does leave me more of a white cast that I definitely have to cover over with makeup. It doesn't feel greasy on the skin. It feels really nice. It works well under makeup. So I feel like these two are kind of comparable, except that the Babo leaves less of a white cast. And then, of course, the Australian Gold, which people are having a hard time getting. These two are nothing alike. This one is very thick, very matte. Um, it does look good under makeup, but you don't need makeup with it because it's very primer-like. But if this one was like a little bit too thick for you and you wear the lighter shade of this, this Babo could be perfect for you because I feel like even though they are so different coming out of the tube. This one kind of gives you the same finish on the skin as the Australian Gold. And I feel like the slight whitish cast that this gives is very similar to the lighter shade of this. The lightest shade has been unavailable for a couple of weeks now. I think it's like some supply chain glitch because the other shades are available. So anyway, if you're having trouble finding the lightest shade of this that matches your skin tone, you might wanna give the Bliss Blockstar a try because I found the shades to be very comparable. Although if you don't like fragrance, you won't like this. I just wanted to mention one other sunscreen, Ulta's house brand sunscreen. It's an SPF 30, is very similar to the Australian Gold. It only comes in one shade. Links for all my favorite sunscreens will be in the info box below the video for quick and easy shopping. If you do use my links, thank you so much for your support. So that's it for today's video. If you found it helpful and informative, go ahead and give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you always get notified 
notified when I put up a new video. So as always, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.